Masi Masika and Angel Banat there with the song Who You Yes. So kicking off our show this morning, this is a Full Circle with Joyce with me, Joyce Omondi Waihiga. And of course, today is Relationship Tuesday. I know you guys are getting ready to start sending in your comments and your feedback. Uh, again, the SMS line is double two triple nine. You can also reach us on our social media platforms. That's at Switch TV KE on Instagram and at Switch TV Kenya on Facebook and Twitter. I'm going to be excited to read out uh, your feedback as we go along with the show show and uh, joining me today to discuss touch and go relationships hey <laughs> we have Dayan Masinde mm -hmm. <laughs> a relationship coach Kari Busana to the show always good to see you same here thank I you so much I hope you're well this morning I'm doing well how about you good uh, good uh, good yeah. doing well okay. mm -hmm. <laughs> so touch and go relationships yes <laughs> um relationships nowadays i guess you could say have almost become like like mist mm, mm. <laughs> uh people are married today yeah a month two months later yeah. we hear you know mm. they've gone their separate ways mm. what is happening my goodness my go <laughs> even just the name that you chose, and touch and, touch and go, go. Ta shika enda, eh. you know um <laughs> it's unfortunate that we live in a microwave generation where we just want quick things you know we are we are more focused on getting something than actually staying uh, and sustaining that something that we're getting right. the same way we focus so much on weddings than actually the quality of the marriage right. we focus so much on getting somebody that the society be like oh yeah you got somebody and once the society gives you a thumbs up like oh that was a hot wedding that you had you just left with the two of you yeah. so if you do not build the right foundation from the very beginning if the foundations are weak that's it that yeah. thing will not last that thing will struggle it mm -hmm. will just just gonna be a, a difficult thing so there's insufficient preparation mm. uh, may, lots of people actually even getting married without premarital counseling mm -hmm. so you've got no idea what it is that you're going uh, into and sometimes also yes some churches actually do offer premarital counseling but maybe sometimes not even going in depth they just mm. glance to it uh, so you check inside there you're like hiya what are we doing wow and you you're know? a relationship coach yes and i mean faith-based yes it. yes and i mean talk to us about premarital counseling because you've raised a very important point yes, yes. um that people sort of discredit the importance of that. Yes. Maybe you can just very briefly tell us, you know, what should people expect in premarital counseling and why is it important? Mm, yeah. From a, from a, from a faith-based perspective, you're told to count the costs. Mm. Before you embark on something, count the costs. That's what Jesus actually said. So whenever you start something, especially something as profound and significant as marriage, you have to know what it is that you're getting yourself into. Mm -hmm. You see, you go to school to be taught how to be a lawyer, how to be a media person, how to be uh, all those kind of careers. But where do you go? to actually learn and get nuggets of wisdom on how to conduct your marriage. That's why counseling is very, very important. Where you're able to anticipate what to expect. Personally, my wife and I, we take couples through premarital counseling. Mm -hmm. So we start with you before the wedding mm -hmm. and also some few months into the wedding. Because sometimes we will take people take you to the wedding and then oops, you yeah. go in mind, see ya. You you know? <laughs> so we take couples through something that we call the 21 issues that affect every relationship or marriage okay. so that now you walk in agreement because sometimes you could be loving but not loving the right way hmm, 21 yes. issues mm. yes i hope you guys are like really paying attention <laughs> because i think these are things that we totally discount yes. and maybe you've never even thought about it yes. like do you know what causes strife in marriages mm. like i mean are you actually prepared but maybe diane um as we get back into touch and go relationships can you just tell us the top three things that cause a lot of issues in marriage okay first of all it is of course sex we mm. all know that's that's like a main thing that actually people don't get to address that mm. so sex how do you uh, affair proof your union so to speak mm. so there's some little uh, principles and nuggets that you can actually apply that helps the next thing is actually in-laws if you do not address how these two my yeah, two families are coming in together <laughs> uh -uh, kunashida. and then lastly since you mentioned three so lastly the third one will be money yeah. That's a key thing. Ooh, that's, that's a key big. thing. If you don't agree there, mm -mm. yeah. And let me just throw in a fourth one. Yeah. Phones. 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 Ah, ah. <laughs> you know what, guys? Yes, if yes. you'd love Diane to come back one day and tell us about these 21 issues, maybe we can do a series with sure, him. Sure, sure. Uh, do let us know. The SMS line is double two triple nine. I think I'd be quite interested yeah, in that. We, yeah. can, mm -hmm. we can see how to work that out. But for now, let's mm. get back into touch and go relationships. Uh, do you find yourself in a touch and go relationship? Have you... Um, it could even be with something as simple as dating, right? Yes, like yes. you're those people who've had like 20 boyfriends. Mm. I don't know how people, mm. <laughs> how they run mm. their lives. Like, yes, yes. <laughs> but like you're dating everybody all the time. Yeah. It, 
it never yeah. seems to yeah. to last or work out. And unfortunately, those habits then carry into your marriage. It's true. But you know, you mentioned about us being um, this instant generation. I, yeah. Is that is that what the core problem is? Because when you look at our parents. And our show shows, man, those guys were married for like 40, 50 years. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and I'm sure they had challenges because mm -hmm. every relationship would have to have challenges. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But they stuck it out. They stuck it out. And you mentioned a very cool, good thing because a lot of us, we live in fear. And mm. so when you live in fear, you have an escapist mentality. When things get tough, as soon as one problem you could just, whoa, you're a quitter. Yeah. You know, see here, I can't deal with this. Mm. So you're not able to actually stay in and, you know, just hold into that. You know, man, I love you. We will pull through this. So if you don't have that uh, staying mentality, you're going to be a quitter. You're going yeah. to be a quitter. And a lot of us also, we're not 100% committed. Mm -hmm. We're one foot in, one foot out. And let me tell you something. You will never get the best in love if you don't have 100% commitment. Mm -hmm. If you just 50, 50 in or 60 in, no, 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 no. It's not going to bless you. And once it's not blessing you, you're not getting fulfilled. And mm -hmm. then you're going to quit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I think that's very powerful yeah. too because... You're right. You're, mm. you're a quitter if yes. that's what you're doing. Yes, yes. And because we, we live in this time where we're like, if it's, we're so empowered yes. these days, we mm. say that we're, if it's not working for me, if it's not doing this for me, then, you know, I'm out. But mm. you cannot take that mentality it's true. It's into true. marriage. It's true. Um, so also in terms of the maturity of getting into marriage, yeah. um, you know, marriage is for, for men, it's, not boys. Oh, yes, for sure. For women, not girls. Yeah, exactly, right? exactly. And uh, you'll find nowadays that a lot of young people, um, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with getting married late. Mm. Personally, I'd say get do it late and do it right. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. But then you find those ones who literally don't even want to think about it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> They'd rather just sustain a girlfriend mm. for, <laughs> I don't know, until kingdom come. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> than actually formalize and, you know, fully commit to that relationship. Exactly. Speak to the young men exactly. today because yes. obviously, you know, um, I'm a traditional girl, so I'm, mm. I'm going to wait for the man to propose. <laughs> I don't know about these babes, man, who will be going down on their knees. Yeah, yeah. That's just not my portion. Guy, you're like, yeah. Power to you, babe. <laughs> Power to you. Yes, yes. But maybe you could just speak to the men right now. For sure. You know, just because you have a salary, just because you have a job, just because you have a body of an adult doesn't mean that you're ready for a relationship. Yeah. You know, you have to check yourself because you, you could be focusing on this physical stuff and accomplishments that you have but you're not ready to actually be responsible with somebody's heart mm. and emotions. Mm. And so if you're not ready for that as a man, you're just going to be wrecking so many uh, women's hearts. And if you're not ready also uh, for a woman, you'll be that kind of woman who's just difficult to love. Yeah. Yes, you look like an adult. Yes, you look, you may appear that your wife material, but once the man just gets close to you and then he starts saying like, I man, you're just not ready for this. You're just not ready. And sometimes women actually say like, oh, uh, the guy is taking long to propose. Maybe even the guy looks at you and like, uh -uh, I'm not, I'm not, I love you, but I'm not too sure. Yeah. And maybe even now for the guy also, he looks at himself like, hey, man, I'm so scared of commitment. <laughs> I'm, I'm so scared of what actually brings. So if you, you can be grown, but you're not ready for mm. that responsibility. Mm. 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 And it is a responsibility. It is, it is. You know, because in marriage, you cannot be selfish. You can't, you can't. You are responsible for someone you, else's yeah, emotions. Yeah. And you have to be vulnerable. Yeah. So are you ready to be vulnerable? Are you ready to let someone in to your inner, most personal courts mm. and just be like, you know what, this is who I am, get to know me. Mm -hmm. And even on the matters of touch and go, sometimes you also look at motive. Mm. What's the motive? Because a lot of us, we're doing the touch and go where it's physical. Yes. That's what you want. Yes. You just want, you just see a, a, a woman, you see a sexy body, you see a guy, you're like, mm, he's built, yeah. I just want to get some. Yeah. So if that's what's driving you, that whole last thing, and then you actually go ahead and now have that intimacy. As and soon then as you have it, you're like, okay, so what's, like, what's I've, next? Yeah, what's next? Yeah. And once something is built on last, it doesn't last. At all. Mm. And we're going to be talking about love versus lust sure. in the next segment mm. or in a couple segments later. But mm. maybe you can tell us what is the difference then for you between mm. love and lust? Mm. Mm. Love comes with responsibility and love is selfless. Mm. I am here to enjoy you and to be a blessing to you, to bring out the best in you. I'm not here so that you can serve me. I'm here to add value to your life. Last, on the other end, is I, I want you to serve me now. I have needs. It is sexual driven. Mm. 
mm. whereby love it is I want to get to know you. I want to better you. Last is right now, gratification. I want pleasure. Right. You can give me pleasure. Give it to me right now. If you want last, if you want pleasure, I'll also give it to you. And then what else? Right. And that's what makes it yeah. a touch and go relationship. Exactly. exactly. If your relationship is literally just focused on lust, then you will find yourself in a touch and go exactly, relationship. We're exactly. going to be hearing more about that mm. uh, later on with one of our other guests coming to join us uh, in studio. Mm. But um, for now, Diane, maybe mm. you can tell us some of the red flags that we should be looking out for to sort of know by the way this relationship is just not headed in the right direction. Okay. Or maybe now I'm like, hey, yeah, kumbe mm. I'm in those two. <laughs> <laughs> maybe so you don't yeah, yeah, eh, yeah. I'm in a touch and go relationship. It's true. You know, what are some of the red flags it's true. It's true. Um, that we can be looking at? Unfortunately, maybe for those who are already in that situation. Yes, yes, yes. But even before you commit to someone and start dating or marry them. For sure, for sure. Number one, if someone is quick to profess love, if they're so casual with it <laughs> <laughs> so okay yeah, wait a minute yeah, yeah. so to see to see changanyue, changanyue, guys yeah. don't don't be awkward he's already in love with me mm -mm. you should actually mm. be pausing and yeah. asking yourself like whoa excuse me i'm a stranger How, <laughs> you don't even know me man yeah. you don't even so if somebody's very quick to profess they've just seen your photo on facebook they're like i love you you're like excuse me <laughs> for sure, for sure. So if someone is quick to profess love, there's uh -huh. something going on. And perhaps you're not the only one that they're doing that to. Maybe it's just an excitement as yeah. part of the moment. So that's number one. Number two, someone who is overly sexual at the very, very beginning. Mm. All they are about is just how you look, what not. They're really asking you, are you a virgin? Mm. When was the last time you actually uh, went to bed into some, mm. with someone? Those are red flags mm. that you actually just know. Number three, someone who is not clear when it comes to committing. Mm -hmm. You know, we've, you spend some time together and then you're wondering like, okay, uh, where are we heading? And now yes. that you, as, you ladies now start asking the guy, where is, where this, is relationship this relationship going? going? <laughs> <laughs> What is our future? Yeah, who am I to you? <laughs> <laughs> who am I to you? <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, you're, you're yeah, acting. For sure, for sure. And I see, as you said, you know, normally it's the man who's actually now approaching the woman. And so we as gentlemen, we have a lot of, um, it's our role to give that clarity. Yeah. And once you stop, once you don't give that clarity, but you make a woman feel special, she starts to get carried away with her emotions. Be mm -hmm. like, you know what? We are a couple, but the guy's like, uh, -uh. <laughs> the guy feels he's still uh, free to do around some some other stuff. I know, I know, know one too many gentlemen who you know have really done that to yeah. women. Yeah. Guys, we're gonna take a short <laughs> break, and we'll be back yes. uh, right after the break with Diane. We're gonna be taking in your feedback, your comments, and your questions. So do send those in. The SMS line is double two triple nine. We'll be back right after this.